Well, here we are. Week zero. College football. It's back. I know. Wild. Crazy, right? It is time, everyone. It is time for all the good marbles to come to us once again. We start very early in the morning in Dublin, Ireland with Nebraska and Northwestern. Scott Frost, he's got to get it together this year. This Nebraska team has much higher expectations than being the best 3-9 and nine team in the country last season. With Casey Thompson in the, in the role of QB, you know, Texas transfer Casey Thompson. Yeah, that guy. The Huskers, they want to be led back to greatness. Can they do it against Pat Fitzgerald and the Northwestern Wildcats? Can they do it? We'll find out. We will find out. So that is probably the premier game of the day, honestly. But there's more. There's more than that. In the afternoon, um, Stephen F. Austin, Jacksonville State. This is going to be a crazy one. The FCS kickoff down in, you know, down in Montgomery. Uh, with the Gamecocks not eligible to go to playoffs, Stephen F. Austin, the Lumberjacks are. You got Rich Rod. Yes, the same Rich Rod that led West Virginia, that led Michigan. The boys are back for the SCS kickoff. Sean Brown at tight end is going to be a game changer for the Gamecocks. But on Stephen F. Austin's side, they got Xavier Gibson, Miles Reed, and Trey Sell. Lumberjacks, they want to head back to the playoffs, and they got guys like B.J. Thompson on defense. This should be fun. Definitely a premier game of the day, if I say so myself. The FCS kickoff is going to be real good. Now, even though technically Jacksonville State isn't an FCS team anymore, this is this is make or break it for Stephen F. Austin. This is a make it or break it game. They got to start off the season well. If they don't start the season with a winning in this game, it might be tough for them down the road. The other games of the afternoon are UConn and Utah State. That's right, Jim Mora had UConn. They got to get something going. They got to get something going against Utah State. You know, you got Logan Bonner back for the Aggies. But will they continue their success from last year after they won the Mount West Championship last year? The Aggies lost a lot of guys at wide receiver. But I'm sure Bonner can get something going. I'm sure he can. And then Wyoming, Illinois is the other big game early in the afternoon. Craig Bowl and the Must and the Cowboys. I almost said Mustangs. The Cowboys. Um, Andrew Peasley's a guy who I think you know might be you know doing something for Wyoming, but for Illinois, Illinois is favored in this game. They have a thousand-yard rusher coming back by the name of Chase Brown. Syracuse transfer Tommy DeBito's also coming along. And I mean, Illinois, they should be favored to win this game. And, you know, Wyoming's kind of lost in the shuffle after, you know, they've had some bad seasons over the past few years. In the evening, in the evening, we got a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff. Moorhead State Mercer is one of those. Uh, Mercer is a team that, you know, is looking to contend in the SOCON. Moorhead State, I have a little bit less to say about here in the Pioneer League. Pioneer League is not really that great of a conference. Uh, but then you have Charlotte, Florida Atlantic. You got you got guys like Shadrick Bird for Will Healy's Charlotte 49ers squad. And then you got Willie Taggart. Somehow he got Nikosi Perry to come to FAU. But what do these what 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 does that mean for these two teams? Will this be a success for these two teams? We'll find out on Saturday evening. North Texas, UTEP, Austin on. The Mean Green, my Mean Green. They have a bevy of wide receivers at Seth Luttrell's disposal. The law linebacker KD Davis. And then you have UTEP. UTEP still has Deion Hankins in, in the backfield. And praise Abawule. Oh, that that's a big D end right there. And you know, UTEP. UTEP's a team that last year gave a lot of teams a run for their money. 
And I mean, this is going to be big early in the season for Conference USA, as this is the last season of the current iteration of Conference USA, like a lot of conferences in their, in, you know, in their new phases. They're going into new phases, some of these conferences are. Vanderbilt Hawaii as uh, it, it's it's been a weird it's been a weird situation out for Timmy Chang. He's inherited the situation at Hawaii that's been pretty bad. You know, the Ching Athletics Complex that's getting expanded, but Vanderbilt, you know, Mike Wright will be the quarterback. Uh, he'll be the starter, which might balance things out a little bit for Vanderbilt. But Hawaii, you know, it's kind of a weird place to be at because a lot of guys left Hawaii after last season and I mean it was just horrid for the Rainbow Warriors it was, it was, it was not a good season for them they gotta do better <laughs> meanwhile Nevada New Mexico State Ken Wilson is now the new HC and he should have a nice QB transfer from Oklahoma State and Shane Illingworth along with Toa Tawa and Aaron Frost on the running back side. And then you have Michigan transfer Darian Green Warren, Dom Peterson, and Joe Juan Claiborne, you know, for Nevada. So Nevada's in a pretty interesting position. We'll see what they can do against Jerry Kill. That's right, Jerry Kill had the New Mexico State Aggies. It took us forever to find out this game was going to be on ESPN2. We kind of knew it was going to be on ESPN2. Thanks, Matt Sars. But now... New Mexico State's in a new era. What are they going to do in this new era under Jerry Kill? And then, you know, one of the premier games that night, the MEAC Swag Challenge, what, it's going to lead to a lot of questions. You know, this game, it's going to lead to a lot of questions as the season goes on in the MEAC and the SWAC. But Howard, Alabama State, that is the nightcap, really. Um, well, one of the nightcaps, really. Vanderbilt, Hawaii is the late game. If you want to watch that. But the Bison, they are. I shouldn't say Bison like that. But the Bison, they're improving. They got eight guys that came back from last season. Urshad Davis for the Hornets. Now, he could be a nightmare out there. Howard's in a weird position to where they didn't look too good last season. Alabama State's kind of in a weird situation to where they're kind of, you know, they're picked third in the SWAC East, you know, right now behind Florida a and and Jackson State, but Alabama State has something to prove, and so does Howard. Somebody's going to get a win in this game. Somebody's going to start 1-0. Somebody's going to do something right, but we'll see who does something right in this game, you know? Um, the other games are a couple of SCS games, you know, that are happening, uh, you know, Austin P. Western Kentucky, uh, no Jared Dagey, he's at Troy, no Bailey Sapp, he's gone, no Mack and Bite for Western Kentucky. Uh, but look out for Dre McCray for Austin P. And for the Hilltoppers, Juwan Jones, you better look out for him. Idaho State UNLV, let's see what Marcus Arroyo can, you know, do. Because uh, the Rebels, they were bad last year. They only had two wins last year. UNLV's got to do a little bit better than that. Florida State, Duquesne, Jay Norvell's got to get Florida State going before they take on LSU on Labor Day Sunday. Um, Florida State's got to win this game. They cannot lose to an FCS team again like they did last year. They got to win this game. And then Florida A&M, North Carolina. Florida A&M, honestly, they're waiting for Jackson State. This is a beat em up you know, for North Carolina as the Tar Heels. They're pretty banged up. British Brooks is out for the season. Antoine Green, he's out for at least a month. Um, I don't know who the quarterback is going to be, but Isaiah Land, you know, watch out for him for the Rattlers. He won the Buchanan Award last year. Um, so whoever this quarterback is going to be for Mac Brown and the Tar Heels, uh, somebody better watch out. Somebody better watch out. For land on defense. Very highly touted guy. So that's it for week zero. That's it for the preview. Um, probably going to be a little bit out earlier than you probably expected. But it's going to be out. And I'll see you all on Sunday night. Or rather Saturday night. It'll be 1 a.m. Probably around that time. You know, 2 a.m. East Coast. 
you know, to recap all the madness from Week Zero. It's I know it's only like 11 or 12 games, but there's going to be a lot of storylines in these 11 or 12 games. Until then, see ya.